This is Paul Friedman, Fossil Fool, coming at you from the Cal Sailing Club at the Berkeley Sailing Pier. This is going to be part two of the rudder build of this carbon fiber rudder that uh, I just completed. I really like how it turned out open with uh, this cool extra feature right here. It turns on a dime. It does everything that you'd want a rudder to do <laughs> out in the water and so far has been reliable, but I've only sailed it once. The total weight of this carbon fiber rudder is five and a half pounds versus 10 pounds for the plywood rudder system. So um, more than 40% weight savings, pretty happy with that. And that's been consistent with what I've been able to achieve on other plywood parts, uh, switching them to a carbon part of my own design. After posting part one of the rudder build, I got some interesting feedback. Part of the feedback was to basically better research existing designs before just going straight for my own design. I really appreciate that feedback and I have learned a lot about my sailing and now about my inventing through YouTube. So I present this project not as the way for you to do it, but as uh, part of my journey as an inventor, making things, improving my techniques. This is a really nice handle for raising and lowering. It's got a locking pin and then it lifts out of these carbon fiber gudgeons, which are glued to the boat as a weight savings method and also to reduce holes through the boat um, versus bolts. So it drops in real nice. And then I put this stainless steel pin through and it won't float away. So I hope you enjoy part two and uh, let's take it from there. I'm now kind of cleaning up and packing this area. And I'm recognizing that the work would have flowed better if the wooden insert went all the way to the top of the rudder as shown by the Sharpie. I knew I wanted to have wood right where the pivot point was to reinforce it, but um, if I had to do it again, I would have run the wood all the way to the edge because then these uh, blade tubes could have just sat up nicely against it. But because I was trying to make the blade tubes go around this sharp bend here, they didn't perform very well and I'm left with areas that I'm now kind of cleaning up and packing. So now I'll try to estimate how much of the filler material we were using. I think that tub contained probably three ounces when we started smearing it into the cracks. So we're adding three ounces of purple stuff to one side to fill all the gaps. And now sanding it down is removing some of it. Now you can see there's the black carbon, the purple filler layer, and then there's this cream colored strips called Baltech. And Baltech is a lightweight filler that comes on a roll and then you wet it out with epoxy and it doesn't absorb that much epoxy and it cures rigidly. It's somewhat sandable, although it's not as good as um, just thickened epoxy with micro balloons. Now here are the steps that we're doing to put the perfect outer layer over the butcher block. I'm not a vacuum bagging whiz kid. I have only done a few projects with vacuum bagging, so I'm not gonna really include too much of it in this instructional DIY content. Uh, we got okay results this time and I'm trying to progress. I'm ripping back the peel ply and the blade underneath has a dull appearance. Happy with the weight so far. So it's under three pounds. It almost makes me want to paint it. And then that of course would increase the weight. 
And this time I'm going with a light blue to fill little areas that are still kind of low. So now you've seen the purple filling step and now the white primer and now the blue filling step. It was only after doing this much filler where the blade got smooth. So the conundrum is that you want it to be very smooth. You want to add the least amount of this type of stuff. This time using micro balloons better than what I used last time, which was sawdust. Even when I use micro balloons, it's still adding ounces. Now that I've gotten to this point, I've done significant amount of additional mass on the rudder just to achieve a smooth result. It's very satisfying and I think this is how it gets to be smooth when it slices through the water. And now I'm exposing more and more areas of black, meaning that it's starting to eat into that perfect outer layer. So I am going to stop. All of this is used sandpaper which begs the question, is this design wrong? Because the whole premise of using the tubes, to get a paste going. the sleeving, was that I could make a lightweight blade. There's a nice paste going. And now I'm just moving around the paste. Not so much sanding, but just polishing giving special attention as I polish the blade. Try to pull those into my filtration system. If possible. So yeah, I'm trying to keep the microplastics down here. Really nice. You can see all three layers there. You can see how water comes off of it. Really nice. Good. I believe in this sleeving and the butcher block method, but I believe that you have to anticipate how to get the least amount of highs and lows. The feedback I've gotten so far is, why didn't you use a mold? Well, if I did use a mold, I would still have to make a perfect rudder, even if it was like a fake rudder, over which to make the mold so that I could make the real rudder. And so you're still going to have to do all this work. It's just that then your part ends up being ultra light, whereas this rudder is merely light. So in this case, I'm actually going to be using the sleeving simply for the fact that it doesn't have a frayed edge. Now I'm stretching it out, making it longer and bag it and then start kind of putting them together. A very nice edge when it's over here on the part, there won't be any sanding to do. It's just going to be a nice edge. Against all good judgment, I locked in the internal dimension of the rudder upper before completing the blade. And it's really only because I was so excited to keep the progress. Of course, I paid the price later with more sanding. Here we go. Now I need to figure out some way of maintaining pressure. 
I'm liking the squeeze out. Oh yeah. But now I gotta maintain pressure without staying here for 24 hours. Why didn't I think this through ahead of time? The stainless steel pintles would be totally fine as a stopping point, but I am not blown away by the weight savings yet, and I want to feel blown away by the weight savings, so I am going for it and replacing the stainless steel pintles with titanium and carbon ones. Um, they're going to be part of the upper, so that'll do away with the need for these uh, four nut bolt pairs. Should be a decent weight savings. nine ounces just for the stainless steel pencils and the nuts and bolts. I've entered full on weight weenie status. I just weighed in the stainless steel pencils at nine ounces and I weighed in these two titanium ones that I uh, sliced up earlier at 1.4 ounces, which means there's a uh, 7.6 ounce savings maximum that's the maximum savings that there can be and i'm about to add some carbon so i think my goal should be to add about one ounce of carbon for the weld to weld these two titanium pintles to the rudder upper here and then to hold them at exactly that position it's got a really nice action where it just kind of like settles in the exact same place every time that's a good jig Fold it around. That one was really nice. I hope you like what I was able to grab from the process of creating this unique carbon fiber rudder using a inside out additive approach that does not require making a mold and pulling your rudder out of the mold. So there are some advantages of making a mold. The rudder probably would have been lighter. There would have been fewer filler ounces. Once you have a mold, you can make more than one rudder. Having said that, making the mold does take time and it does use materials. I I'm intrigued by some compromise approach in which perhaps I could use pink foam with packing tape um, with some very simple angles on it as my mold. Something like that. Something that doesn't require all of the shaping work. Curious about making another rudder just to see if I can make it lighter, but these days I I just kind of want to get out and do more of this, you know, I'm excited to learn how to sail. I'm excited to go to further places. I've gotten the weight savings that I wanted, close to 45%. It took longer than expected. It came out looking nicer than expected in terms of the upper. The blade turned out fine for my standards aesthetically, not perfect, but look what it does. I'm able to move through the water and it seems very reliably strong.